Open enrollment season is coming when companies change their benefits and employees have to make some big decisions as the cost of health care rises. Many firms are now encouraging workers to choose health insurance plans with higher deductibles. So we want to take a look for you at the pros and cons of those plans so you can decide what is right for your family because most of you are in the thick of this decision period right now. Joining us is personal finance contributor Carmen Wong Ulrich. Always good to have you with good us. Good morning, guys. So these high deductible accounts versus the more traditional health care plan, one would guess that companies are trying to push you toward this because it's less expensive for them. Yes, that's the key. This is really growing, the high deductible plans, and they call it consumer directed plans because here's what it is. You're paying less monthly and monthly premiums, but you're going to pay a lot more when you go to the doctor, when you have any procedures. But the high deductible plans, large companies, now two thirds of large companies in 2012, that's what they're offering you. Now that's up from 61% this year. This is going to be more and more common. 10% of companies actually only offer high deductible, and it's a way for you to share the cost of health coverage. So if you have a choice, though, who is who could this be a good idea for and who may want to choose the traditional if they can. It's a good good thing if you're young and healthy because you don't need to pay these very high premiums. You rarely go to the doctor, but if you have a large family, anybody with a chronic illness, you want to make sure you get the traditional plan. Now, there's one really key thing which is really great. I love this. This is the HSA. This is the health savings account that is tied to a high deductible plan, and health savings accounts are fantastic. Consider it like an IRA, but for your health care. So you can actually put money in. It's a tax deduction up to $3,100 a year year if you're single, 62.5 if you are a family of two or more. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, it can grow. You can invest it like an IRA, like a 529, and it's potable. This means you can take it from job to job or when you're losing your job, it stays with you all the way through to retirement. So this is another way to save for your health care coverage. Okay, so you've got these options, but let's say you have a chronic illness or you have kids that are often sick, then what Traditional plan is for you because yeah. it's going to cost way too much for you to go through that deductible and you're going to pay too much in health care costs. If you have to go to the doctor often, stick with a traditional plan, but high deductible plan makes sense for a lot of other folks. There's also, you mentioned this, this HSA. Yes. A lot of people are more familiar with what's called an FSA, the a flexible FSA. spending account. Right, right. Walk us through it, just quickly what the differences are, but also how you can use that plan to your advantage. Yeah, and that's very different, and that's something we've seen We've seen a lot. HSA is different in the sense that this is something you invest, it grows, you can take it with you, and FSA, this is an account that you put money in, and it has its limits as well. It is changing because it's not as popular. So in 2013, the new rules are that this is going to shrink from $5,000 that you can put away to $2,500 in 2013. Also, over-the-counter medications no longer qualify for FS FSAs. Now, this account is something that you, you use it or you lose it. Yeah. So if you don't finish up and using all that money, but if you know you're having LASIK, you know you have a chronic condition or you need insulin, this is a way to put pre-tax money away. If you're gonna have a baby. Exactly, I mean, that you can help that, pay even your expensive. doctor copays. Yeah. They are expensive. I wouldn't know, but I'll take your word they for it. <laughs> they are very expensive. They are very expensive. If you don't have health care coverage through your employer, what should you do? Yeah, what and there's more and more Americans that are in a situation, whether it's because you're in between jobs, you have a small business, you're a freelancer, you need to get your own health care coverage, and yeah. here's where you need to go. Your state department of insurance. Go to iii.org. This is the Insurance Information Institute website. Mm -hmm. On the upper left-hand corner, just click directory and you can put in your state and it'll give you all that information. They help you shop, especially if you have a pre-existing condition. And if you're a freelancer, freelancersunion.org. Check in there. If you are a member of your family, a member of the military, usaa.com. There are options out there for you. And if none of this applies to you, just shop online at comparison sites like eHealthInsurance and eSurance.com. But whatever choices Get you're going to make, you got to do it quickly because you're don't have time exactly and things. get insurance absolutely gotta have insurance all right always great advice carmen thanks, thanks guys